Hey guys, welcome back to Text Connect, a learning center for textiles. And this video and a few more videos coming up in this series are all about ring spinning. We'll have a look at its function, mechanism, individual components, and much more. So we have already discussed the spinning process in general in our previous video on spinning process overview. If you haven't seen it, it is highly recommended to go and watch it first so that you have a clear idea in your mind. The link to the video is attached in the description below. So out of all various spinning techniques, let us see what ring spinning is. Ring spinning is one of the oldest machine oriented spinning techniques used for staple fiber spinning, which involves a traveler rotating on a ring. So this is how a ring and traveler looks like and the image next to it shows the ring and traveler during the process on a ring frame. This little traveler rotates on the ring. Let us have a look at this little animation for a better idea. The basic function of a traveler is to provide twist and tension to the yarn. It imparts twist by revolving around the ring. The thing that you see between the ring is called a bobbin, where the traveler also helps to wind the yarn. You can see the yarn rotating, where it is getting twisted and wound around the bobbin. This is because of the traveler through which the yarn passes and is rotating on the ring. Let us now move further and understand the whole process from the start. Now this process of ring spinning is carried out on a ring frame, which looks somewhat like this. Now here's a diagrammatic representation of the same. The long central section of the machine that you can see in the image, on which the production is actually carried out, consists of longitudinal members like spindles and rafting rollers, which extend over the complete machine length. You see the ring rail here? This is where the ring and traveler do the twisting and winding like we saw in the animated video in the previous slide. We will discuss about the ring frame from top to the bottom and discuss all the components. But before that, let us know why ring spinning. What is the task of ring spinning? So number one, to draft the roving for the conversion of very fine strand of fibers to form a yarn of required count. That is, in technical terms, we attenuate the roving until the required fineness is achieved. Now, this is all done in the drafting zone. Secondly, to impart strength to the yarn by inserting the necessary amount of twist. And last, to collect the twisted strand called yarn onto a handy and transportable bobbin. So, this is the task of ring spinning. The image to the right shows how roving bobbins look like. These are drafted and twisted in the ring frame to form a yarn of a required count. Why is it the most widely used spinning technology? Number one, it is universally applicable, like most of the textile fibers can be spun into the required fineness. Secondly, the yarn spun from this machine can demonstrate the excellent quality features like a uniform structure and a good strength. Thirdly, it is easy to operate as compared to other spinning machines. The yarn is also suitable for all the next processes and more than 80% of the total yarn produced in the textile mills is being produced by ring spinning machines. Now let us move on to see how the process is done, what are the different components, zones, etc. We will discuss about the longitudinal members which are there present throughout the machine length. These are the ring frame parts and components which are involved in the process. Now, what is the process flow? The two yellow bobbins that you see at the top are the roving bobbins, which is the output material of the speed frame. They are labeled as number one. The number two in the figure is the roving, which is drafted and twisted to form the yarn. These bobbins are held by the bobbin holder, which is numbered as three. Now the guide bars, which are numbered four, guide the rovings towards the drafting zone. Number 5 is the drafting zone where the roving is attenuated to the required count and also dealt with irregularities. Number 6 is the fiber strand which will come out of the drafting zone for twisting and is guided by a yarn eyelet which is numbered as 7. Now number 8 we have the spindle which rotates at a high speed imparting the twist to the fiber strand and also giving the drive to the traveler on the ring which are numbered as 9 and 10 respectively. 
Now this final bobbin is mounted over the spindle where the yarn is wound. Now there were too many components here, but we'll discuss each one of them zone wise. Zone 1, Zone 2 and Zone 3, which is depicted in the image given. Now this image will give you an even better idea of how the zones look like. The roving package, the drafting zone and the spindles. Zone 1 But before before discussing zone 1, you should know about what a roving is. It is a long narrow bundle of fiber which is an output material of the speed frame. Now this is a robin bobbin where the roving is wound around a bobbin. So in zone 1, the roving is fed to the ring frame from a roving bobbin which is held by a bobbin holder and that is mounted on a creel which you can see in the image at the top. For all the spindles, roving bobbins are creeled on the machine. The roving is guided with the guide bars which is then passed through the drafting rollers. Hence to sum up zone 1, the roving bobbins are inserted on a bobbin holder which is ultimately held on a creel. Now these guide bars guide the roving into the drafting system that is the zone 2. Similarly, let us talk about zone 2, the drafting zone. Now this is how it looks like and these are the different parts of the drafting zone which we'll be discussing in detail in the coming videos of the ring spinning series. So the roving comes into the system which is one of the most important assemblies on the machine since it has a considerable influence on the irregularities present in the yarn. The drafting arrangement is inclined at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. We draft the roving to reduce its weight per unit length. The roving is brought to the desired fineness by imparting the required draft using the top arm pressure and the speed variations in the bottom rollers of the drafting zone. Normally, a 3 over 3 drafting system is used in a ring frame. Total draft, draft distribution and the arrangement of drafting system is very important for both the yarn quality and the machine performance. Coming down to zone 3. This is where the twisting and the winding of yarn takes place on the bobbin. After the resulting thin ribbon of fibers leave the delivery roller, the twist necessary for imparting the strength is provided by the spindle, which is rotating at a high speed, which you can see in the images. Pause the video and now have a look as I mention the name of the parts very carefully. Now there's a spinning ring and a traveler as we saw in the start of the video which is mounted on the ring rail as you can see in the picture. In the process each rotation of the traveler on the spinning ring produces a twist in the yarn. Let us understand this better. The yarn coming from the front rollers of the drafting zone is threaded through this traveler and fastened to the bobbin. The bobbin is over the rotating spindle. Winding on of the yarn is accomplished by the rotating traveler, that is, the traveler guides the yarn onto the bobbin. Now this means the ring and the traveler is necessary for taking up this yarn onto a tube mounted on the spindle, that is the bobbin. The traveler moves on the ring around the spindle. The ring traveler has no drive of its own, it is dragged with the help of the spindle and the yarn that is attached to it. Now the yarn is wound up onto the cylindrical cop formed by the raising and the lowering of the rings which are mounted on a continuous ring rail. The ring rail moves up and down winding the yarn onto the cylindrical cop. Now this picture here shows the twisting and winding of the yarn process. Have a look at it very carefully. Now there is a very important concept to note. We know that both the spindle as well as the traveler rotate. But they have a difference in the rotation speed. This is due to the relatively high friction the traveler experiences on the ring and the atmospheric resistance. Now this difference in speed is actually necessary. Why? Because this difference in the speed actually makes it possible for the yarn to be wound onto the bobbin. If both the traveler and the spindle are rotating at the same speed, the winding won't be able to take place. Hence the speed difference is essential. Now this is a real picture that shows the spindles, the bobbin, the ring rail that is in the red color, the ring and the traveler, 
the yarn, the yarn guide to give you a better idea. Now, in the bottom of the image, you can see some black strips. Those are actually responsible for giving the drive to the spindle so that the spindle rotates. Now, as the spindle rotates, it gives the drive to the traveler, which is holding the yarn and winding it on to the bobbin. Now, this is a slow motion video uh, straight from the mill, which will show you the traverse motion of the ring rail, how the ring rail goes up and down and the ring and the traveler rotate around it and do the winding and the twisting process. See, this is how the ring rail is going up and down. And we have the bobbin in the middle, which is mounted over a spindle that is also rotating at a certain speed. You, you won't be able to see the ring and the traveler because they are present inside, like onto the ring rail, which is moving up and down. Yeah. So, uh, we have come to the end of the video, but we'll have, we'll discuss some trivial information as well. Now, one staff is equal to six to eight spindles. So it's a technical collective word for a bunch of spindles. Now in the market, these machines are sold based on the number of the spindles that they have. The companies are known for the number of spindles they manufacture. For example, Saurer. This company has a machine with 2018 spindles. So if you want a machine, you need to mention the number of spindles that you want. And based on that, they'll show you the machines. Now textile mills usually have one lakh to five lakh spindles. Depends on the size of the textile company. Now talking about the speed of the traveler, it is a maximum of 40 meters per second and the speed of the spindle is 15,000 RPM. So yeah, this is it from my side in this part one of ring spinning. I hope you guys have got an idea of what a ring frame is, what are the different components in the ring frame. Uh, now in the coming videos, we'll discuss in detail about the various zones uh, that we saw in this video. So yeah, stay tuned as there is a lot more coming up in this series of ring spinning. Stay safe, have fun and keep watching Text Connect, a learning center for textiles. Mm -hmm.